on the day that a lot of you calculus lovers would uh, love after observing that the square root of 49 is smack dab in the middle of the first two terms and the second two terms. You can see there's definite symmetry of the square root of 49 being right in the middle of this. Of course, square root of 49 is equal to seven, right? So this looks believable, but you'd have to couple it with the fact that um, the square root function is concave down. The de that means the derivative is actually uh, uh, decreasing. So it's gonna increase at a slower rate the further you go, and so that would be why it would knock it under four times seven. Now that's not a formal proof, so we're gonna use another approach here called Cauchy-Schwartz. And I wanna to talk to you briefly just about the equality condition. Any of you guys who've been through the proof of Cauchy-Schwartz know the equality happens when this happens. Uh, a sub i is equal to some constant times b sub i. And of course, y'all, if you take a look at this well-known formula here, Cauchy-Schwartz, this is for i equals to uh, one, two, to n, right? Now, n is equal to four for our problem, okay? So right here, we're, we're, we're taking n to be four. Okay, and again, what is this? This is the equality condition. You have equality, meaning this, the left-hand side would be equal to the right-hand side uh, if and only if you have all these coordinates more or less, on, it's on the same line. This is a linear relationship. So it's like saying if uh, the coordinate a sub one comma b sub one, a sub two comma b sub two, all are on the same line. That's what this says. But you'll see by our choices here, they're not. So we're not, we don't have to worry about the equality condition. We'll get a strict. It says less than or equal to right here, right folks? But we'll get a strict. Okay, so these assignments are natural once you see the form of the Cauchy-Schwartz inequality. And the proof of that actually is kind of based on this. Uh, it's, it's a fun proof. There's a million proofs to, to the Cauchy-Schwartz inequality. But, but anyway, here we go. Um, this is all pretty straightforward. You can see where everything came from, folks. There's no need for me to comment too much. This is the object that we're trying to find the upper bound for. You can rewrite it. This is sometimes called the one trick. Okay, the one trick. And it's quite useful just based on the, this kind of inner product linear algebra formulation. This is like the inner product of n-dimensional vectors here. This is the magnitudes, product of their magnitudes, right? So uh, anyway, let's see what we get here, folks. Um, this part would be two, right? That's simple enough, right? Uh, this is one squared plus one squared plus one squared plus one squared, right? And uh, I did it for emphasis just to make sure you saw where I was fitting into the formula, right? So that's two. Now over here, you see we squared these square roots, right? That's why the square roots disappeared inside the sum here, okay? Now, y'all, I believe this sums up to 196. So this is equal to, um, what is that, 14, two times 14, two times 14 equals 28. And so it's QED time, we've proved it. All right, and again, I, I like to prove quite a bit the calculus Oh, y'all, by the way, this is another interesting thing right here. If you break it up a different way, you get you don't get as sharp. I, I guess there's something I'm not understanding here, okay? But it, it's, it's not nearly as sharp. I'm not sure what's going on with that. Maybe these are more nonlinear, I guess, in some sense. I don't know. But this is a, a possibility just to try it like this. Some of you may be curious. But this comes out to be a number much greater than 28. It's something like 40-something. Okay, so it still proves it, but it's not very, con you know... Uh, but anyway, this is a, a sharper lower bound. In fact, I think 28 is the uh, least integer with this property, okay? So anyway, um, we proved it. And uh, let me know what you thought. Let me know what you think about this too. I, I, this, this certainly is true, but this gives you something much larger than 28, okay? So anyway, um, uh, we are 
done and again this it's a less than we can wipe out the equal sign here okay uh, because of the aforementioned these guys don't th these are not points on the same line if you if you coordinate coordinateize it right you I mean it's clear right that one comma square root of 44 and one uh, comma square root of 45 and so on they wouldn't be points on the same line they would there wouldn't be this the same slope wouldn't exist between any of them right so, uh, but in any event, that's, that's the proof, and uh, hope you enjoy.